We are live. <clears throat> Welcome to Never Stop Learning, the podcast. Today is a very exciting live episode here on YouTube. Also, shout out to the TikTok Live crew who are tuning in for this amazing conversation. It's been a while since I've sat down here and really felt aligned with why I started this podcast. For those of you who have been listening for a while, you may remember that last May, so almost a year ago, 11 months ago, well, it's the 25th. So basically, I started this on April 30th. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, April 30th of 2021, I started about 35 days of putting out a podcast episode every single day. And this was, I mean, to be honest, I can't remember any other thing that's been difficult to do that I've done for 30 days straight. And that experience reminds me of, number one, how much I can overthink it when I haven't given myself a deadline. When I was recording every single day, every morning I would take out my microphone and think start talking. Here's the thing, right? I don't always have to know what I'm about to say. This is what my life is. I'm not a planner. And so in that process of, I got to say something and I got to post it because I'm going to do it again tomorrow. You know, it really gave me such a like there was a weight off of my shoulders in a big way because there was no longer something to prove. Like I wasn't trying to come up with a cool idea. I wasn't trying to brainstorm stories I can tell, right? Now, not that planning for something is bad by any means, but there is a part of my school trauma that has me like freak out about deadlines. And here's the thing. I've always said this. I hug a fucking deadline. If I need to do it by X, Y, Z, I'm going to do, I'm going to start it right at Z or something. What You know what I'm saying? By doing the podcast every day, every day was the last day to do it. When today is the only day I have to do something, I'm excited to do it, you know? And that is such a huge lesson and really opens up the doorway into actually understanding how it is I work and what it is I actually want from myself. I think it's very easy for me to put up and like I said do a little brainstorm slap it up on a whiteboard or, or, or on a wall and say these are my goals for whatever time period and like it's hard to see these big things that are going to take many, 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 many days of sustained effort. That, you know, I never forged that comfortability with longer term effort during my childhood, during my experience with school. And so now in my life, right now, let's use the podcast as an example of me taking on something that is work but something that is incredibly important to me and something that is exciting, right? I take this on and then all of a sudden I get fucking stressed out. I have not, I have not posted an episode since April 7th, I believe. And shout out me, post this today. Here's my thing. And here's, I kind of posted a TikTok just earlier about this about the way 
that the performative nature of relating to each other has become the standard. It's like everyone is kind of standing at the front of the classroom, kind of like giving their own take and trying to express their personality in the way where you can feel everyone's eyes on you. That's what happens when we press post, right? It is a similar energy to, okay, Wes, can you come up to the front of the class and, and give us your show and tell, you know? And so we love to do that when we're in first grade. We love to do that when we're in second grade. But when we're in eighth grade, ooh, I start to be like, I don't want to bring my stuffed animal. I don't want to bring in something that could easily be made fun of, right? And then back to the podcast, it puts me kind of in a place of being like, well, I don't want to post this if it's not good enough. I don't want to blank if it's not blank enough for blank, like for them, even if we don't know who they are, even if we might say to ourselves, I want TikTok to like me, right? Or I want people on TikTok to find me. Why? Why do I want that? So when I actually think about, okay, I don't feel like I'm here to accumulate an audience. I'm here to what? Here's a story that I want to talk about on my flight yesterday. We'll get right into it because what is my agenda? My agenda is to share the insights from my life because guys, right now, this is the most fucking like I'm looking at all my shit. I am tearing down all of these shoddily built facades telling me that I'm that, 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 that all this stuff that I'm not good enough or that I, I did too much or, or that there are, that there are hoops I must jump through before I'm worthy of that, that so here's my thing one of the biggest things that i'm powering powering mm, no what i am delicately holding in my arms nursing trying to understand <laughs> is my scarcity mindset it is my desire to, like, I don't give a fuck about money, you know? I don't care about my career. But at the same time, I do care about my career because I have this intuitive knowing that my career is the authentic expression of my soul and the invitation for others to bounce back and forth with me, to soak in these same ideas with me, to offer up the next, you know, what, what Epsom salt bath of our souls to understand that my dad was fucking angry a lot. And I never even thought about it as something notable until years and years and years after I left the home. And I found myself in a partnership for several years where I was unconsciously mimicking and embodying the same lack of emotional maturity and comfortability with hard emotions that my dad exhibited my entire life. And, you know, it's like, I don't want to sit here on the podcast and talk about my father trauma because I want 
all the people with father trauma to follow me and, and like my videos. I want you, Kels, to be in this room with me so that I am in flow of drawing out these stories from me and of wrapping my figure it out word salad around these experiences that I can shed all sorts of light through my memories and through my understanding of what I now see that I did not see at the time. That is incredibly hard to do. And I have just recently opened up this very, like an open wound of, of exposed nerves and of pain and of frustration and of wanting to resist my past because I don't like it. And I don't like that I feel it in my bones a lot of the time. I don't like that I feel out of control sometimes in the way that I respond to things, react. Being able to pinpoint moments where I truly didn't feel safe in my home or to express something real, I see exactly why I did what I did. I see exactly why I hid the stuff that I didn't even know what it was, that I was afraid to look at in my own thing. And if I'm afraid to look at it, well, then my girlfriend will hate it. It's my dad energy. If I'm afraid to look at it, if I'm ashamed of it, well, then how could my woman ever love me through it? <laughs> or some shit like that, you know? And uh, <clears throat> thank you, Ember always says a positive mind finds opportunity in everything. Totally. So <laughs> here's my story. I was on a flight yesterday and I'm in the window seat. The two people are already there. I have to, you know, they get out, I get in. They're talking it up. They're like chatting it up as I'm walking towards the seat. <coughs> and this is like a guy my age, a woman in her 30s or 40s. And they're just, I, I think that they're freaking best friends. I sit down and I'm like, all right, guys, y'all are doing your thing. And, and then I realize they're doing the classic, yeah, my husband and I had our kids. And oh, my God. So realized this is a guy on a business trip. And this is a woman heading back home to her family. And I'm sitting there and I am not a part of their conversation, but I put in one earbud over here because I'm listening to them. Sorry, guys, I got a little snot because I got a little teary eyed. Okay, here's my point. Um, plain lady, plain guy. His name's Austin. Actually, shout out Austin. So Lady and Austin, like, oh my God, I don't even know where to begin. And I don't even know if this is interesting, but I swear to God, this woman was like trying to convince him to have kids. She was talking about how her and her husband had their first kid and they were like, oh my God, why didn't we do this sooner? And this was a woman who just wanted to hear herself talk. She by this guy, by Austin, politely listening, being a very interpersonal person. We're sitting next to each other. He's not going to shut you down. But he was just, he was giving her back just enough. 
he would he would add in his own little little tidbits. She was, and I I don't even know where. Oh, guys, is this even worth saying? Because what is my point? My point is that it felt like a betrayal of the we broke we both bring a little bit of small talk to each other and it felt like she was literally holding him hostage giving him every anecdote when i was in high school i went crazy but my dad would have kicked me out so i was always the the designated driver well my kids never did that i can't believe they have these student loans well if we saved up our money well my kids should never move to seattle it's so, it's so far well but they could go to grad school out there but Please, come on, don't move. Like, mm, and that's like, that's like just the tip of the iceberg. Anyway, it was such an interesting experience for me because I was experiencing this as like these two sides of the same coin. Like these moments where a lot of us like the opportunity to say, hey, where are you from? What's she up to? Oh. But it's the, oh. This lady did not have a, oh. She just had a listening for every possible moment to interrupt and to to take away, to just start running away with with the story, and I was so grateful that I wasn't trapped in the middle of, of her shit. Um, but, you know, it reminded me of like, huh, how often does this woman have a person who's not invested in her life to talk about her life to? And I think about this is in a way perhaps kind of what I'm doing on this podcast. I am taking the stage. I'm, I'm saying, let me just talk for a second. But it's in the appropriate setting. And I'm not keeping any of you hostage while I do it. You know what I'm saying? So I guess in that way, I felt validated in like, I'm normally a small talk type of guy, but this thrust me away because I was like, mm, I don't want to be taken advantage of by a nice woman. And I guess my response to that is, how is listening to someone for a couple hours being taken advantage of? Well, Because it was literally like she was hijacking time. We were locked. We were locked into our seats. And I guess here's the thing is, what in our lives are we locked into? See, I'm just always making connections. Who knows what we're going to say next? Let's go, guys. What in our lives are we locked into? What are these grander periods of life where it can feel like we're kind of like, well, I'm in this plane seat until I get to the destination. So whatever happens around me until then, I don't get to resist it physically, I guess. I guess we can internally resist it where in my head, while this lady was talking so many times, I was just like, nope, like shaking my head to myself because it was so cringe. Where do I feel like I'm stuck? And where is a place where someone else could take advantage of me? You know? I don't think I would have ever gotten to a point with most people sitting next to me where I would have started crying and sharing with another 
in that way because I think there's something to be said about more comfortability in emotion when we know that if we are overwhelmed, if something goes awry, if someone says something, that there is a door we can walk out of to reset, right? Not the case on a plane, right? Not the case, say, when, when you date a coworker, right? That type of thing where it's like, hmm, here is our reality. We are here. And who is going to try to take advantage of that? Who is going to try to milk those moments for some meaningful meat, right? And, and so here it is. Me milking that moment for meaningful meat is me recognizing that why was I so cringed out by this woman? It didn't affect me. Austin seemed, seemed like he was okay with it. It seemed like he was having an okay time. I was bringing all of my own judgment on her, projecting it onto him and feeling bad for him. We bring our own shit to everywhere we go. And so I guess all this to say, I'm glad that happened because in a way it was kind of a push for me to be reminded of, oh yeah, there is value in sharing all these stories of my life. And there is also a time and a place, right? There are certain relationships. There are certain stories that I tell to my mother and certain stories that I don't. What's a story, bro? What's a story, bro? Should we go to story time? For those of you watching on YouTube, let's head over here. Thank you for being my community. And let's talk about... What was I about to write? What the fuck was I just going to say? Story time? Story time. All right, guys. This has been a long time coming. Uh, story time. Okay. Hey, hello, it's story time. Story time. Story time. Hey, hello. Oh, it's story time. All right. It's the ultimate story. I told it a few days ago. Story of my fly tattoo. My dudes, this has been a long time coming. And thank you for sticking it out into the deep realm of this episode we're 23 minutes in and we're about to go 23 minutes more my dudes all right so let me set the stage for y'all about these flies josh all right so here i am my sophomore year of high school <clears throat> my sophomore year of high school i am doing my homework my pre-ap biology I'm in my basement bedroom that was like our old toy room. And I was like, I'm the cool basement kid. Yeah, I'm the older brother. I'm the oldest one. I'm in high school, really living it up, doing my homework, listening to With You by Chris Brown, which had just come out. And all of a sudden, I see two flies, house flies buzzing around. I hear them. I see them. Two flies buzzing around my room. So, <laughs> gosh, I can't focus with these flies up in my grill, dude. Right? So, here's what I do. I freaking smash them boys. I freaking smash them boys. I think I used like a, like a notebook. It took me like five to ten minutes. You know, I'm, I'm a hunter. I'm hunting down these flies. Smack, smack. Like, scoop them up, dump them in the trash. I'm like, whew, all right, back to biology. Five minutes later, doo -doo -doo, the human skull is weighs 18 pounds or, or whatever facts about the fucking body or some shit. 
I wasn't taking anatomy, but biology. The human frog is no, I mean the, the nature's frog is weighing three ounces or something. And all of a sudden I hear a buzzing again. I look up. There are two more flies out in this burrow. And I'm like, I kind of did a double take and I'm like, wait. I, I don't know if I did this, but it's, it makes a good story if I say I went and double checked the trash to be like, did I not just kill these two flies? What the F, Braj? Anyway, I did, and there were two more. So I'm like, weird. So another hunting sesh. Whoop out, whoop out. And I'm just kind of like, it's it was really the noise that really got to me. You know, and so four flies dead in my trash and I'm like feeling good, but I'm also kind of like, that was weird. That had never happened to me before. So everything's all right. Fast forward next day, I get an A on my biology homework. I'm just kidding. I don't remember if I did or not, but just, let's just say this is a story. Flash forward or Fast forward, I get an A. Well, actually, my well, my my biology homework wouldn't have been graded the same day. Anyway, sorry. Fast forward to after school the next day. I come home. I open up my basement bedroom door. I turn on the light. I drop my backpack down. I look up and I freeze. There are 50... 60, 70 flies all over my room. There are 30 flies on my bed, 10 flies on this chair. Like it wasn't like an intense, crazy swarm, but like you ever been in a room with 50 flies and none of them were flying. They were all just sit standing, just sitting on my shit. Goosebumps. I am like, I like back out as if it's like there's like a monster that's sleeping that I don't want to wake. I like back out of the room, close my door, run upstairs. I'm like, mom, what the fuck? Like, anyways, don't really remember how that all went down. My dad gets home. I'm thinking like, dad, do you have an explanation or, or like something? And he's like, huh, here you go. And he just tosses me a can of Raid. And so I'm like, uh, so I just raided my room and just like sprayed poison all over all my shit to kill these flies. Like, bruh, traumatizing, dude. I like didn't go in there for like a whole, like two days. I went back in and I had to dust bust up all of these flies. Like, I had to empty out the dust buster like three times. Just fly carcasses just tumbling into the trash. Guys, this shit fucking scarred me, dude. You know, where it's like nothing really happened to me, right? But yet I was invaded. I had been put upon. I was my room did not feel safe anymore. You know what I'm saying? So there I am. I think that was my sophomore year of high school. And now I'm a dude who has a vendetta against flies. I hear a fly buzzing the next years, like the next couple of years. I'm like, nope, get out of here. Um, back to the flies though. After I killed them all, one day soon after I opened up my closet and I see this like what I basically think was a maggot nest that was hanging from the rafters of like the basement ceiling and I'm like huh all those flies and maggots must have hatched inside this closet which like I said, was our old toy room closet. So I didn't use it as a closet. So I never really went in there. And they must have been 
contained in this closet and they just found like underneath the closet door to come into my bedroom. So I'm like, ew, there were maggots in my closet. What the freaking freak? Oh, uh, uh, flies, ew, gross, a fly. Ew, get out of here. I'm like, I love having a fly swatter. Like we had fly swatters in our house the next couple of years. And I just, I loved to have it. I was like, I became fly averse. I became a, lo- a fanatic about like killing flies if they were like in our our environment at the at the barbecue i'd be like get out of here like i'm an anti-fly guy okay so i suppose y'all are wondering how does that apply and why the heck were you not a fly guy but you have a fly well here we go next part of the story flash forward fast forward to my junior year of college. So summer before my junior year. So this is like 2013. And I had just failed every class of my previous semester of college. I'm in a dark place in 2013. I hadn't told a soul except my roommate who basically found out I was failing because he noticed that I was never leaving our dorm. And I was never going to class, you know? But here I am with a, a handful of Fs to show for the past six months. And I am freaking the fuck out. I do not know what the fuck I'm about to do. I'm afraid to tell my family. I'm afraid that my friends are going to judge me. I'm ashamed that I let it get this bad. I'm ashamed that I didn't show up to my final exams. I didn't turn in the papers. I stopped going to class. One of my professors even said, hey, you're not coming to class. You need to drop. Otherwise, you're getting an F. If you drop now, it won't be an F. And I was so ashamed that she confronted me, that it drove me deeper into the, I'm not going to do a single thing except sit here, play video games, eat food, and smoke weed until the semester ends and we all have to leave. That's one of the darkest moments of my life. I, I, I really was so afraid to look at what I was doing because I knew it was wrong. But it's almost as if what I knew more was that other people were going to tell me it was wrong. Other people were going to say, hey, why the fuck did you do this? That was my biggest fear. So I thought, and that even came into play with how the semester ended when I stopped showing up to classes. I didn't want to be confronted by anyone. I didn't want my professor to have the opportunity to say, hey, Wes, where's that paper? Hey, Wes, where's your homework? Because I didn't do my homework. I didn't do the paper. So here I am, back at home, pile of Fs in my pocket, no idea what my future looks like. I'm living at home again for the summer, free rent, but my little sisters are still there, so I'm kind of back into the family mode. One weekend, the whole fam is traveling a few hours away for a day or two for one of my sister's performances. I told them I had to work. I did not have to work. They leave. I start my day, and I take this day as an opportunity to have my second ever mushroom trip. Now, I'm so grateful for this experience because I was incredibly aided by the fact that I was in an environment that was the most comfortable place I had ever been without any of my family members around. 
I had complete, free, utter reign over my entire house and, and land. And my previous mushroom experience had been with a friend at my house and it had gone a little wonky. It had gone a little wonky. Him and I didn't really connect on the mushroom level. So based on that experience, after understanding a little bit more what to expect, I take this opportunity almost as a, I'm trying to get fucked up. I don't know what, to, I'm, I'm trying to forget about my problems. I'm trying to forget that I just failed low key because I have not yet truly convened with the mushrooms ever until today. Here I am an hour or two in, I'm in my backyard on a beautiful June summer day in Iowa, sitting underneath our oak tree, feeling in touch with all the nature. All of a sudden, dun, 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 two motherfucking flies run up on me, boy. One fly lands right here. One fly lands right here. Immediately, I am now four years deep on being an anti-fly guy. So here I am in a mushroom state, really feeling it, and all of a sudden, bzz, and I'm like, Ugh. Bzz, get out of here. They come back again. They come back a third time. I'm like, Ugh, I'm trying, quit interrupting me. And then all of a sudden they come back. And that's when I realized these dudes are chilling here on this same spot again and again. The fuck is this about? Hmm. So I leave my arms still and watch these flies perch upon my skin. I start to feel their energy on me, starting to connect to me. And that's when I start to hear them truly trying to communicate with me. The first thing that I heard from them was, hey Wes, we're sorry about that whole being in your room in high school. We're sorry. And I'm like, whoa, they're sorry. And that's when I hear them go, <clears throat> and I'm like, what? <sighs> they were waiting for me to apologize as well. I had never thought of myself as being a perpetrator of violence in this scenario. Their apology led me to realize I'm not just taking care of my own thing. I murdered all these flies. And I don't think of it as murder, but it was like a I killed them. If I wouldn't have killed them, they wouldn't have died, you know? And so I'm like, I'm sorry that I killed you guys. And now it feels like they are those flies. They're, it feels like these two flies are like the spokespeople for those flies four years ago or, or like they were there or something. And they're like, we forgive you. And I say, I forgive you. And I realize y'all didn't want to be in my room. Y'all didn't want to be there. And I didn't want you to be there. So immediately we're like, whoa, that was just a, a big misunderstanding. No one was trying to fuck with anyone. 
we just didn't know what else to do. And that's when they say, do you know what to do now? And that's when the veil broke. And I realized I had been putting off acknowledging the situation that I was in. They said, do you know what to do right now? And all of a sudden, I'm met with this wall of, I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to tell. I don't know if I'm going to finish college. I don't know why I did that. I'm ashamed. And I just start going and going in my head. And then they're like, hey, these flies, these flies are like, hey. And they like interrupt my, my snowballing in my head. And they're like, hey. And I'm like, what? And they say, you are too worried about what other people are going to think, about what you've done and about what you're going to do. This is not about anyone else. This is about you. And before I could like say, but they were like, look at us. We are flies. We don't give a fuck what anyone else thinks. We don't give a fuck, okay? We do what we do. We eat what we eat. Y'all think it's gross. We love dead carcasses. We love shit. We eat what we eat because we are the ones who decide. We are not swayed by the opinion of a human, by the opinion of our brother, of our mom. We just simply do what feels right and what we need to do to survive. And then I'm like, oh my God. Like everything I had been doing had been about covering up something that I wasn't proud of. So much so that all of a sudden I was building cover-ups of cover-ups of being ashamed about the cover-up and being find out that I realized that almost all of the shame and the regret and all this stuff that I'm feeling isn't even about that original thing. It's about all of the ways that I've been trying to cover it up and I've been trying to hide and I've been trying to put on the airs that I'm not really fucked up and that I didn't fuck up and I swear I'm a good student, but I just was smoking too much weed and all of this stuff that wasn't about the actual heart of the issue, which is, hey, I made these choices. And I get to decide how I move forward. I decided that. I decided what my priorities were in those moments. And I get to decide now, too. I don't have to be afraid whether or not my parents are going to say, Wesley. Whether or not my friends are going to be like, what? You dropped out? All of that stuff literally dissolved away when I realized that these flies were here to say, bro, you are not living like yourself right now. Why did I not do all this stuff? Right? I was so upset about having failed and all the ramifications of that. I hadn't asked myself, do I want to succeed? Do I want to pass these classes? Because everyone everywhere is going to tell me, you're in a class. <laughs> yeah, you want to pass. But did, did I know why I was there? Was I there because <clears throat> I'm passionate about becoming an elementary school teacher, which was my major at the time. I skipped out, failed out on my teaching a middle school math class one day a week. I would just not go and all this stuff, right? So I was just, but it was literally me looking at all of the effects and all of the stuff. And these flies gave me the opportunity to, to say, 
I don't have to go back if I don't want to. I don't have to. And also, I don't have to drop out if I don't want to. I have options. Back to the flies. They're like, hey, dude. You just got to figure out who you're trying to help. And how it is you're going to find them. They found me. And they intuited that they are what I needed in that moment. The flies. And it made me think about all the people that may need me. who will not fall in line with the same type of negativity that I spray at myself all the time. But we could get in our own way. Those flies could have hold, held a grudge. I could have said, Fuck college. That shit is bullshit anyway. Which I think, I do think that. But I went back. I changed my major. I studied business, which I don't give a fuck about. But I put my head down in an entirely new way. Saying to myself, hmm, now I'm here on purpose. That day under the oak tree with the flies on mushrooms, I said, mm, I'm halfway through college. I don't want to be a teacher, but I want to recommit to just pushing through. I no longer felt like I had to convince myself that this was gonna be my passion or that I was gonna love being a teacher or, or whatever. I was now in charge of saying, all right, I'm actually gonna make passing this, getting this degree a priority because I hadn't before. I treated it as a nuisance, as this annoying thing I had to deal with that got in the way of me hanging out and getting high and partying and watching TV and stuff like that. And I, from that day forward, have this small part of our earth that is on my side. Flies are on my side. Flies hold meaning they know exactly when i need a reminder and they give it to me they know exactly when they need to touch down on my skin to give me that little bit of jolt that little bit of <sighs> making me feel alive and My life has forever changed from that moment. Flies are a part of my life. When I see this fly on my skin every day, I am reminding myself that I do life for me. I do what I want to do. I am not here to uphold an image. I'm not here to be an image. We just live. We all have an image that other people may have of us. Oops, sorry. Just messed with the mic. We all have 
this idea about ourselves. And a big part of that feeling of who we are does come from how we have been mirrored by others or how they have seen us. And if, if all the people who see me this week have their own deep insecurities and fears about themselves, well, then I will likely experience a little bit of that coming at me, even if they're not trying to, even if they're not trying to project their shit onto others on purpose. It's just going to happen. And remembering that I am not separate from this earth. All these moving parts are here for me. If I choose. I had to consciously make the choice to, for the fourth time, not fling these flies away from me because I felt bothered. Why did this experience happen? This experience would not have happened to me if I did not already have fly trauma. That trauma, low key, but it, I really felt it. I really hated flies for years. I really felt like a, 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 a bad deed had been done to me by the flies, truly. Without that negative connotation for them, it would not have been meaningful to me that flies were present in the backyard on that day. When I talk about how my dad was angry a lot, that's not who he was. I don't know, I don't really rem I don't remember ever feeling really scared of him, but I felt scared of his anger. It felt like it was something that just had to explode. Like, oh yeah, dads explode, right? You know, like every few weeks, dads just like break some shit or yell at some shit or or like punch a punch a wall nothing ever anything physical but f physically hurting and damaging property or 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 shit and so when i relate these two experiences right say me being a kid having an angry dad me being a teen, having flies invade my, my personal space. Okay, trauma that I have memories of. Carrying that with us for however long, right? Then is the... Oh, because of this, I am, because of the fly trauma, I am honed to be hyper aware of flies. Because of that hyper awareness of flies, I am tuned into, hey, they're landing on me. Because I'm tuned into that, I'm open to accepting something. And it was because of the mushrooms that I believe I wasn't totally resistant. Now, father being angry. Now here, seeing myself get really angry, seeing myself in a heated moment be like, oh, and like, when we start to go like this, what do we want to do? We have built up tension. And then I want to fucking punch some shit. Because that seems normal. I observed that as the way anger is expressed. Punch some shit, 
go fume about it. We don't talk about it. We don't address what the trigger was for the anger that has arisen. We release the anger that has arisen in hopefully a way that doesn't harm anyone or harm stuff. Without my dad being angry, my anger wouldn't make as much sense. I can be compassionate towards my anger because I feel like I've witnessed anger being the driver of the body. And I'm not willing to let anger drive my body. And I don't know if I ever would have thought of it like that without the visual image of my father's energy being expressed through outbursts of rage. You know? So, all in all, what we really are here to do is to remember our pain because it has lessons for us, I think. And for me to always and forever have clung to I'm the I hate flies guy, who knows which you know, fork in the road I would have taken at that, at that crucial moment of my college life. So, bang. Woo! Oh, thank you, good homies, for listening to today's episode of Never Stop Learning. Much love to you and yours. We're going to end with this is a new dream. I'm going to go ahead and cue it up on YouTube. We're going to, I'm going to put it here in the stream. If you are listening on, this is a all right. If you are listening on podcasts or something, um, how do I share? Oh, share screen, share screen, Chrome tab, the bang, share. All right, let's let's go like this. No, let's go like this. All right, and then go like this. Here we go. I hope this audio is good. It's a new dream. We don't know where we're going, but this is a new dream. This is a new dream. Yo. This is a new dream, new dream. Oh, oh my God, God. look at all of these colors in the sky. Now that I'm focused on something else and where I reside, where I can find. How I can put together a portfolio that I can show to someone else and they'd say, yeah, bro, that's, that's cool. cool. But I know that my shit is cooler than you could think of. I was surprised. Every single moment, this is mine. And I look in your eyes and cry. And then you see me and I see you watching me, baby boo. You know what we about to do, but you don't know what. I don't know, but we're about to find out. Whoa, sloppy with this, but you don't even feel me. This ain't cocky. This is just a witness to my journey. And you and I could find that even if I'm on a highway, you can be with me and I can be with myself every moment if I try. But look, we all need time to ourselves and time out of ourselves. Time just getting down deep into our emotional wells. Yeah, I know that I'm just bringing up pails, bringing up pails. Now, you know that my emotion, that was this is the shit. I'm not trying to run from that no longer. I'm just learning that I am in charge of the way I speak. I'm in charge of the way I see myself at the table and compete. All the tasks I put in front of me. So I'm coming for you. You'll see. Yeah, you're going to see me on stage. This is a new dream. 
you gon' see me on stage. And this is the new dream. This is the new me. This is the new you. We gon' do what we meant to do. And I know that always it's ever changing, but we're not afraid to go somewhere that we didn't have on our notebook just a week ago. So now we know life is open doors. So of course, take some effort and some taking a risk and stepping out into something uncomfortable because you don't really know what it's about to look like that's what freestyle is yeah i got it all in my pocket and you don't have to second guess it i got it i'm never about to put it down i'm just gonna bless it Woo! yeah that's all i need every time i am complete and i'll always say this but i know you can hear it because i know that shit is me c-o-m-p-l-e-t-e I don't need it, but I need a reminder. So come on, let's remind ourselves, please, that we all got what we need. But we don't always remember it. And it's hard to see in the moments when our stressors feel bigger than reality. So, yo, I know we don't have to all know where we're supposed to go. Supposed to don't exist, but we trying to float to the shit that makes us feel like, ooh, we clicked in. And this is now, look at me, look at you. Now look back at your phone. Dude, we are just here. I am a human and so are you. So we can connect. It doesn't matter where you are. Come with me and we can go far. But not just trying to just say, look how many miles I log. I'm trying to say, Woo, look, look how many smiles I log. In my experience of vibrancy and intimate connection with the shit around me. So let's go on the highway and let's go on the dirt road and let's go in the backseat and, and let's go in the backyard and let's sit on a toad. So. Whoa, I don't have to know, and neither do you. Because if you do, you lying, and you just trying to fit your life into the grid work of our future plans. Like it's a fucking calendar, bitch. A calendar don't, don't exist, even if you keep track of it. Oh. So come on home, let's go where we can see each other clearly. And I'm here to help you along the way. I hope you'll help me too. Woo, yeah, woo, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my guys. Thank you for listening. That is one of my favorite freestyles. This is the new dream. I'm building my dream life. I'm talking the shit I want to talk about. I'm not explaining myself to anyone because I know that I am in charge and I am dope and I'm building the life I want and I'm living in abundance and it's all going to happen. My shit is nice, dude. So thank you for listening. I love to tell that story. Every time I tell the fly story, it comes out a different way and different lessons about that period of my life are told and, and, and flow from me. So I'm sure I'll tell it many more times in this life. But again, I have many more stories. Thanks for hanging out. I'll catch you next time. Shout out. Much love. Never stop learning. Peace. <laughs>